Hey, what's up? So, we're trying something different this time. This is a question and answer sesh where I'm being interviewed by the Slipshot Spartan, an army officer and a patron of mine. We had some audio issues and I cleaned it up as much as I could, so I hope you're understanding of the sound quality. At some points it sounded like one of us was dropping sand onto a xylophone, but most of that was resolved. Anyway, um, we didn't get to talk about the Manchester bombing or the even more recent London van attack. Maybe it's for good reason. We had all sorts of topics in this little powwow, and it was fun. Wouldn't have been so much if we reacted to these developing stories. Talking about this constant barrage of fatal attacks and its accompanying barrage of denial is as infuriating as it is, somehow paradoxically, boring and desensitizing. Apparently, this is the new normal. How much more can be said about this that hasn't already been said before, again and again and again? How many times? You know, I'm not even going to start. That'll be a topic for next time when the dust settles. If it ever actually does. Barely have time to conduct a vigil before another eager attack adds to this fast-growing dust storm. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Anyway, without further ado, here's our conversation. Hope you enjoy. Okay, cool. So Outstanding. Uh, We're live. Very good. Fine. Well, I am, uh, as you know, Squish, I am the Slipshot Spartan, and I am here with the one and only Squishtronic of the regressive video fame. <laughs> we all know them. We all love them. I am really excited for this interview. Thank you very much for doing this with me. I really appreciate it. Oh, no, no. Thank you for being the administrator here. This fun Q&A slash interview. For those, uh, for those who don't know, uh, Slipshot Spartan here, he's uh, one of my generous patrons. Also, he makes his own videos that are pretty cool. He's a small time YouTuber, would you agree? <laughs> Very small time. <laughs> yeah, Very small but, time. But all the same, you should help him grow. Check out some of his stuff. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty well researched, I'd say. Much appreciated. Thank yeah. you. All right, so I'm going to jump right in here because uh, there have been some questions that I have wanted to ask, but I also kind of wanted that shared here. Let's see here. We'll start at the beginning. Now, from what I gather, you started with illustration and comic. Tell us a little bit more about that, because I know that that original icon that pops up whenever we're having a Google Hangout is that little, like, round ball tank with the eyeball. <laughs> I've always really liked that. Tell us a little bit more about your illustration, your comics, and, and so forth. Yeah. Um, actually, that little uh, little robot guy, I actually switched it out to my more... Uh, my more recent logo, but that uh, graphic was part of my uh, my old website, which I still have, and it's been under lengthy reconstruction. But mostly, that website had a lot of comics and just general art of you know sketches or just studies of this and that. Normally, mm -hmm. stupid pre-existing cartoon characters like just Pokemon or whatever pop culture thing. <laughs> have them do whatever you want them to do. Yeah, it was a it was a lot of that. I I have been I guess quote unquote traditionally trained in uh in in fine art specifically drawing and uh i've you know i've spent a lot of time not just watching cartoons but trying to make my own but yeah i had that website and i was you know just uh i tried to put it on different forums or like on tv and art try to get my traffic all that same thing right you guys do. but yeah very good uh are you pursuing that like are you still are you still working in that direction well, the whole thing about it is, I guess, I mean, I, I don't say, I wouldn't say that I'm putting it off, per se. I, it's just, well, I guess I am putting it off. <laughs> right, priorities change, yeah, and I understand. My, my priorities change, but I, I, I don't think I ever say goodbye to whatever I stop doing. There are definitely modes of time when I get really into something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I can relate. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Now, speaking of, of switching gears there, so what got you into the political realm? Well, you know, I was going to jump to that likely next question, but um, my co it, it all kind of blended in together. It's, it wasn't just like, uh, oh my God, a call to action. But when I was making my comics and whatnot, a lot of the times they, and this is kind of an effect of politics bleeding into everybody else's realm. It's not that, you know, what got you into politics, it's rather like, how did politics... <laughs> how did politics get its claws into you? Exactly. <laughs> right. That's, it started partially when it was encroaching on my uh, territory of, of trying to you know, produce humor. And it's not like I was big uh, at all. But when I was making, um, and maybe I'll put some images on, on screen here. But when I was making, uh, 
I made this one comp, not a comic, but like just a piece of art. It was called Birdo Jenner. So I play video games. So Birdo is known in Nintendo history and video game history as a whole as the first transgender uh, video game character. As being a pink dinosaur, you know, it's not that big of a deal. But in Super Mario Bros. 2, you know, the instruction booklet labeled her or him as a guy who thinks he's a girl. Right, I remember that, okay. Yeah, and then later on in, in, in future Nintendo games, they made it so she's just very, very feminine. She is officially a girl, even pairing her with the more masculine Yoshi, if Yoshi. <laughs> well, that's because she was identifying as a girl, finally. Yeah. So the transition wasn't complete yet. <laughs> I guess so, I guess so. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, I, you know, I, I took that opportunity and I took the cover of Caitlyn Jenner on the Vanity Fair magazine. <laughs> And I, I just kind of like painted over like the whole thing and just made it call me Birdo. As opposed to <laughs> call me yeah. And, and that was just a dumb little thing. Like <laughs> it's, you know, cause Birdo, you know, Birdo did it first. And, uh, yeah, but that's like one of those things that's, that's high level epicness because it, I can see that slapped on a sticker and then slapped on the back of your laptop. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, yeah, it would, it would work. I was I kind of wanted to put it on a t-shirt, but it was kind of like, I hate when square images are posted or put on t-shirts. I don't know why. So it, it didn't, it didn't work out for that, but like, whatever I put it on my, Mine's account. Maybe I'll link to that. Uh, link to that too. Might Definitely, be I've seen it. I know what you're talking oh, okay, about. But cool. I just, <laughs> it's still never been. And speaking of that, I would, so we're we're talking about humor overall. Now, one of the easiest ways that I've found to kind of sway somebody towards your point of view is to make them like you. And humor is a great way to do that. And I think you've really kind of captured that in the progressive line of videos or the regressive, I guess. Yeah, thanks. Absolutely. Now, where did the idea for that come from? Because it, it's so well executed. I, I've always wondered, God, man, how much work did he put into that? I will answer that in just a second. Um, I, I was going to say on the on the political. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, no worries. No worries. Just before I forget, because like I, 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 I might come back around to it without mentioning it. I, I'll be all disjointed as I usually do. Yeah. So when I made that Birdo thing, it got a lot of negative feedback. It was really? insensitive. Well, it was insensitive. And I was like, what? Yeah. Why? I mean, has, this idea isn't too new. And that just kind of started me exposing me more to, to these kind of, uh, liberal sacred totems here that I'm not allowed to touch. So that was just one of several things. Okay. So you caught a lot of flack for the Birdo. Yeah. I got, a, I got flagged some Birdo. It was like on some transgender, uh, subreddit. It, it, it's weird because either A, you, I got crap for, you know, making fun of transgender people or Caitlin. And then, or B, I, I got like flack for from gamers because I didn't call it Birdo Birdet or Birdetto, <laughs> which was the official <laughs> name or something. Uh, Would it have been better to say Birdland? Yeah, you know, or, Caitlin. Yeah, I, I get. I don't know. It's I just can't please anybody. But that wasn't really a big deal. But that did kind of begin like this kind of transition into like I also made some Hillary Clinton. So I had this comic, and it's you know nothing's funnier than explaining comics over and <laughs> over. <Right. laughs> but fuck it, I'll, I'll just ruin it. So there was I had a comic that's it's probably on my Twitter, I think. And oh, by the way, I'm absolutely horrible at social media, so I'll I'll put some links to things that may or may not be active or updated uh, often, and maybe okay. find the thing I'm talking about. But there was thing this like glass half full, glass half empty, pessimist, optimist, realist. So it was. <laughs> And it was just a, a picture of a glass of water here. And it was the pessimist, the glass is half empty. Optimist, the glass is half full. Realist, the glass contains water. Hillary Clinton then, the glass does not is not supposed to have water. Hillary Clinton now, the glass <laughs> should have water. Or shouldn't, whatever. The other one. She switched. The joke is that she's a football. You know? right. and, then, and then the last panel was Bill Clinton. I did not have sexual relations with that glass of water. <laughs> with a tip over a glass of water. You know? <laughs> Very good. Yeah, but but that Very kind of good. thing, you know, it's like, uh oh, it's like, am I getting political? It's like, does this even count? Uh, I mean, this is a pretty safe. I think I consider these things to be pretty safe, but you'd be surprised at the kind of ire you inspire when you when you do that kind of thing. It's like, okay, well, let's just keep pushing it. Let's just. Keep oh yeah. It. And you start seeing like, oh, the left is pushing more and more. And I use the term the left, like I didn't use to say that as often, but it's a pretty good term. You kind of find yourself there, yeah. But yeah, you start. You know, pushing back because they're the ones who are being more authoritarian than the I ever am with the right. Like, okay, yeah, the right 
uh, parts of it, right, where they used to think that, okay, you know, Pokemon is the devil, and I used to let's laugh right along. Like, <laughs> right. Yet, like, in recent years, it doesn't seem like it's them that's doing it at all. It was indeed these people who don't, who tell me, I can't make fun of obesity, I can't make fun of trans people, I can't, uh, I can't make fun of other cultures, which is crazy because I've been making fun of this one all the time. Wouldn't it be only fair to make fun of everybody equally? Isn't that the underscoring of religion of the liberals? But no, they're only allowed to make fun of white Christian males <laughs> with thin privilege. You can't make fun of anybody else. Yeah, but that does lend into my, uh, the political, oh, the, what did you say, the regressive ideas? The regressive, yeah. Yeah. Where did the idea overall come from? I mean, what, just a sh- stroke of inspiration one day? or You know, that's a, that's a good question. I think, if I'm, if I'm being honest here, I think it kind of started from, like, just a lot of kind of arguments that I had with people. And, uh, you know, they might describe themselves as, Liberal, a lot of different people, liberals or progressive liberals, or I don't even necessarily know if they identified in that way, but it, it started out with like, okay, I'm tired of having these arguments and being called hateful or scared or uh, not, not so much racist, which is the one that everyone knows, like, oh, you're a racist. Xenophobic. Phobic of some kind. I'd, I'd be I'd be fearful. That's the whole thing. I'm just a scared person. If I express concerns <laughs> of... Uh, of a, alarming patterns, and by the way, I think a, a big part of being uh, progressive, and I put that in quotes, is that you're not allowed to notice things. If you do, you're questioning the conventional religion that's, that is tolerance, and diversity, and altruism. These, Darn right. These supposed virtues. Anyways, I, 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 uh, I got into these arguments a lot, and then I started noticing, like, okay, you can't just call me names and be done with it. That's that's everybody. If it, not every, you know, you don't have to know a lot about logic, but the ad hominem is one that every Tom, Dick, and Harry on the internet knows. So, so I started like, okay, what other what other things are they doing? They brought up anecdote a lot. I'm like, look, I, you don't have to tell me. I've experienced it with my own eyes or something. You, you get you get those kind of things. Like, okay, anecdote. That's great. Now I'm not. I can't dismiss your own anecdote. I can't. I can't properly contest it. However, and now I'm quoting. Sheriff David Clark, in I think an interview with Don Lemon, um, uh, who said, well, not with Don Lemon, I think he was just moderating, I think it was with Dr. Lamont Hall. Oh, the, yeah. And uh, he said, you know, anecdote and emotion are not evidence. I'm going, well, darn tootin'. That's correct. But statistics just don't mean anything. You you just have to play a victim uh, narrative. And that is what wins arguments. And that made me yeah. unhappy. So you, you start collecting these one after another. Oh, those aren't Muslims. Hey, is that a no true Scotsman going on? I I recall Christians pulling that uh that <laughs> number off back in the day, but now it's on Muslims. Oh, hey, you can't insult that culture. Why are you not? Are you committing some special pleading here? Are you being a relativist? You think things are only okay because because they're special? Why are they special? All right. Hey, I'm gonna beat you up or get you fired. An argumentum ad baculum. That's not great. <laughs> yeah. So so these things became enumerated. And they became what eventually became the little boxes that progressive insurance commercials utilize. They have like a little boat, a little car for boat insurance, car insurance. I'm just like, okay. right. Well, those are just the fallacies that these progressives sell. So, but also the the agents themselves uh, started through this postcard series. I saw some. I, I saw the word progressive more as I saw progressive liberals. But when I saw the word progressive, like in an ad. Just, just somewhere on the internet, I'm like, oh, that's kind of funny. I wonder if that's doing damage to their brand by being basically with a political idea. Yeah, and uh, I also listened to some trance music, so progressive trance. I was like, man, I almost don't want to listen to this, <laughs> but I love repetitive music, so I almost don't want to listen to it because just because of that name. I'm like, ah, screw it. I'll just, I'll listen to it anyway. Or type in, I don't know, uplifting trance. It, it gets me into it. <laughs> right. but, I, but I digress. That's that's how I started. So progressive, like, hey, I guess, I mean, it wasn't a big leap, I think, to just go, that. let's just make a kind of a satire of this. So I, it, I'll also link to these. I made an Imager albums that got, what do you call it? I'm rarely on Imager. I always do this. I always go like, I go these like short stints on a, on a site and I'll just leave it. <laughs> so on Imager, I made it to the top page or whatever twice with my progressive postcard albums one and two, where I outlined like ten 
in effect, agents like Jane Uger, Reza Aslan, Lena Dunham. People have already covered in some videos by now. Right. But also just these other instances like that. In her words, tranny. This tranny called herself a tranny, so I'm allowed to say it. So... <laughs> So this uh, transgender, transsexual, whatever, and I think it was, uh, I think it was somewhere in Oregon, probably Portland, that just spit in another guy's face because they were arguing. Just, they were arguing about Trump, and these Trump guys were simply like, "Look, just go do your research on it. We can't really go farther on this debate if, if we're just like working on completely different uh, facts." And this person, and I don't know why it's always the, the left who are dressed like banditos in these public demonstrations, but they, <laughs> they this train. Yeah, this tranny pulls down her bandana and just spits directly on the guy's face. And then when they're like, whoa, this guy uh, committed an assault, uh, or or she, whatever, says, you want to hit a woman now? I'm a tranny. Hit a woman. Punch a woman. Punch a woman. I'm like, that's that's amazing. Wow. Yeah. I mean, the height of the height of entitlement. Yeah, well, not even entitlement, but these special cases. Like, like so wait a minute. You want to be treated equally, but you'll just switch between being a man and a woman at will, and uh, I mean, I, I outlined it better in my in my postcard things, but no, but that makes perfect sense. That is like one of the most regressive things you could possibly do. Yeah, and and those guys are one offs. Like they, they don't deserve their own videos. They're just these whatever things. It's the same thing as with as that. Was her name really Bonita? The Bonita was the girl. She was the gal at uh, San Francisco University who was yeah. messing with that kid with the dreadlocks. Exactly, the Jewish kid with the with the blonde dreadlocks. It's like. Yeah. Like, what, what did he? What did she say? It's like you know you're culturally appropriating those from Egypt. It's like <laughs> right. He says, "Are you Egyptian?" <laughs> he's like, "Nah, bro." <laughs> Which uh, he tried to play, play it off okay, but yeah, she and an ethnic inspector gadget hanging out, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, just you know harassing the kid. But um, that was one. Another one was that Austin, Texas Whole Foods cake scandal, where the guy mm -hmm. fabricated like the people working at Whole Foods. Putting fag, I think, or homo on his cake. <laughs> of all places that you I get know. a cake from, what is the least likely place you're going to get one with a hate crime on it? Okay, so there's three there's three layers of what makes this beautiful. Uh, one, he did it in Austin, Texas, like the most liberal city <laughs> in Texas. Uh, right. Two, he did it at Whole Foods, like a liberal, like a liberal safe zone within Austin, Texas. <laughs> three, the baker who he accused was also gay. So <laughs> it was just it was just an amazing just amazing total collapse. Just uh what happens when just I think he was like a gay pastor too. Some so like a gay pastor goes into like a gay store. Well that's not exactly <laughs> correct. Then it goes to a gay yeah, I was gonna say this joke's starting good. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah but uh I did all those things. I put some links in there um to the imagery album. Uh, albums and uh, they did pretty well and and I was surprised too because like it had like a three to one like to dislike ratio but it got a lot of views and it sparked a lot of discussion which is cool but in, especially in the otherwise quote unquote cuffed imager which is strongly connected with Reddit which I right. which I look at you know with with uh, suspicious eyes and I spend a lot of time on not a lot of time but uh, considerably more time on Vogue. Uh, dot co the alternative to Reddit after the uh, the r slash uh, fat people hate subreddit guys <laughs> but yeah so those since those postcard ads did well being influenced like a, by a lot of people like atheism is unstoppable and Sam Harris too I uh, I decided like you know what let's just extend this further and I made my first Jane Huger video just a short little two and a half minute thing and I think I posted it on Reddit and it got uh, mirrored and reshared by it. Yeah, as you said, did really well. Yeah, and I was, I was happy about that. I was, I, was, I was like, whoa, cool. And then like people like Chris Ray Gunn and Nate Talks to You, Black Pigeon Speaks, and Blair White each commented on that video. I was like, all right, well, hey, this is guess what I'm doing now. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, was, uh, that was pretty cool. Definitely. Yeah, so that's how, that's how I uh, started. But like, oh, I, I made the connections, fallacies, agents. Okay, and then I started watching progressive commercials to like replicate certain assets that they use. Oh yeah, visually, and then I made some postcards, and then Definitely. I made the videos, and uh, yeah, that's, Very that's good. the whole thing. Now, a specific measure of my respect for these videos has been your disdain for logical fallacies. I mean, I, I hate them just as badly as you do, but you seem to be a bit more well-educated on them than I am. And How did you come to be so? <laughs> huh. 
You know, well, I wouldn't even, uh, I don't know if I'm not even that well educated on this. I've definitely not taken any formal logic classes or anything. But a lot of it, I think, is just tantamount to common sense. But we don't even need to know the, the Latin phrases behind what every fallacy is. You, or, I mean, you, you eventually do find out. I mean, there's just a huge plethora of information. I mean, we do live in the information age. You can just yeah, absolutely. all sorts of websites that, uh, that, and videos on YouTube too. Like PBS does like a fallacy series and they, they, they brought it out even for election year. There's a, there's a guy with a book, got the name of it. I think it's called Logically Fallacious. And, uh, you know, he outlines tons and tons of different fallacies. And people misuse these fallacies all the time, too. I always try to put a little part in my videos that say, like, look, I can call Jank Uger a bison. And it's not that hominem. I'm also going to outline why he's wrong. <laughs> he's not wrong because this is bison. this is the This is the fallacy, and this is why it's that fallacy. Exactly. Gotcha. So, like, I'll, I'll do the same thing with, like, No True Scotsman. I'll, I said that uh, in the in the video, like, look, sometimes you just say things just, oh, that's not a real friend or something. He's like, you, you're just saying that uh, because it's semantically just easier to say. It's just faster. Yeah. You don't you don't have time to construct everything like a huge formal debate. I get it. However, the way that people do uh, use it in, in the most important things, the most important issues, is is getting ridiculous, and it has to be it has to be outlined. Definitely. Yeah, there is that measure of common sense in the back of your head whenever you're in a discussion with somebody and they say something and it's fallacious and you're the back of your mind's going, God, that doesn't even make sense. Why would they say it like that? that? And then you go back later on and you're like, okay, I'm looking this up. I'm looking this up. Here's what happened. Here's what he's, oh, okay. That's what kind of fallacy it was. You know, you don't have it in the moment necessarily to use. So you hang on to it. <laughs> you get it. You yeah, file it away. So the next time you get to say, okay, look, that's a logical fallacy. I understand where you're coming from, but you're wrong. And here's uh, why. Right. And I definitely think we're in the middle of building that past the middle, I'd say. We're definitely well on building a complete set of arguments against just these, these common refrains. They're very, very common. I mean, AIU brought up the, the not all straw man before I considered it. Like, oh yeah, it's, it's every time you say, hey guys, Many, many are a problem, but they're not all. Well, hey, that's great if I said all are a problem. I said many. Stop yeah. Substituting my argument. So things like straw men and uh, appeals to emotion are probably the most obvious. I mean, those I've seen my whole life, those are much, much easier. They're taking a diff. They're being utilized by a different ideology. This and they're so lazy. Yeah. Appeals to emotion, especially. They're just, uh, you did a video, I remember, with John Oliver. <laughs> and it was, it was, a, it was a John Oliver segment. I it was blatant. I mean, it was just, he didn't even apologize for it. He was like, here's this sad, sorry little girl, and here's me wagging a finger in your face. Yeah. Yeah. And here's, and here's a, here's a cameraman kicking a, a, a refugee. <laughs> we <Yep. laughs> were all evil white people. Let them all into your country now. Right now, it's absolute, there's absolutely nothing going on the other way around that will cause emotions to also flare for the opposite side. They're not justified in their emotions. Only we are. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm going to cover that, too. But if you, if you do do some digging on, uh, in, on emotional appeals, you'll find that there's many, many more. There's all types of emotions. Yeah, you can appeal to people's fear or, or even their flattery. And I think a lot of that is what virtue signaling is. It's like, oh, yeah. God, you're so... You're so tolerant, so virtuous. That's what everyone strives to be. It reminds me kind of like that South Park episode where everybody's driving a, a Prius. They're like, hey, is that a Prius? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the whole thing. And um, there's, a bunch, there's a bunch of other ones, but I'm definitely going to cover them in a, in a future video. I'm, I'm just thinking if like, I should separate each type of emotion or if I should just put them all together. Because there are ones that are even less obvious. Like, I think uh, appeals to novelty are uh, a technically a part of an appeal to emotion. And that's essentially saying, hey, this is new, therefore it's good. Hey, we've never let this many immigrants into our country, that, therefore it's good. Like, hey, transgenderism, oh, they have a 40% suicide rate, forget it. Because that doesn't matter. Only the fact that it's a brand new thing that flies in the face of convention and tradition, therefore it's good. Now, I'm totally not a pro-traditionalist everything guy, but I respect tradition and I respect that those institutions are in place because they've been doing something right for a very long period of time. Sure. So sure. so I, I'll say that, yeah, probably conservatives are more uh, susceptible to traditionalist fallacies, whereas liberals are more uh, susceptible to novelty fallacies. That's the whole yeah. platform of Obama. Hope and change. Change yep. what exactly? <laughs> 
change what creating the most the like racial tensions I've ever seen in my entire yeah. life. It doesn't have to be good, it just has to be different. Exactly. That's that's, that's, all. that's it. That's the whole thing. But yeah, but to answer your initial question, I'm always learning. Uh, there's much, much, much more to learn, especially in regards to I mean, just logic, history, whatever current events are going on. They all, you know, mold together. But another reason I, I use uh, the fallacy devices is because empiricism can only get you so far. There's so many. There's such a big world with all these competing facts, and, and we we're living in a in a world between alternative facts and fake news. And I don't know what that, what does that mean? Nobody, <laughs> nobody has the same presets uh, or the same. I think it depends on, on who's making it. If we as content creators on YouTube make it, they're alternative facts. Yeah. If it's a mainstream media outlet, it's fake news. <laughs> yeah. So. It, but, uh, but, but the whole thing is that if you just point out with logic how someone's wrong, you can convince somebody like within a single Thing, they, they can find the, the, the logical structure behind the argument and see like, oh, that's technically incorrect. If you simply put forward something like this event, the Cologne rapes did happen. I was like, uh, no, they didn't. Now we're just not getting anywhere. We, we just yeah, have different absolutely. sets of facts. So that's empiricism when weighed against logic. If 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 I like, and I think I outlined them in my my uh, current three fallacy videos. Why doing certain things is wrong. It should be fairly evident, but it doesn't matter because. You know, you still, I'll still get my number of, everybody gets their dislikes. I'm just like, what did I say wrong? What's incorrect? You know, <laughs> I, that reminds me of, uh, well, you know what? I'll leave that topic for uh, another time. Uh, okay. On. Yeah. Now, the, uh, taking real life out of the equation, you know, you, you and I both have jobs. I'm sure we have family. I know I have family. We got other obligations, it, just stuff crawling up your keister all the time. How long does it usually take you to complete a regressive commercial video? You know, that's a good question. And like all of my answers, they are not brief. So <laughs> uh, um, I'd say that, well, I I sift through, well, when I first started making this regressive stuff, I collected a lot of examples. They're all in my sketchbook with partial scripts. They're partially written uh, or typed documents on my computer too. There's, I have a bunch of things already. Like I could put out probably like a strongman video or a false equivalence video or a, uh, maybe even an Amy Schumer video, and Michael Moore video, I could start that tomorrow probably, and I have maybe 50% of the information. Mm -hmm. right? uh, so that stuff has already occurred, so I don't know how that tallies into my production phase, but what ends up happening is I still do, I, I still research everything that I have researched again, and I, I go through different rabbit holes, I read whatever articles I can for both pro and anti, whatever, like let's say Michael Moore, you know. I'll, I'll look for that stuff. I'll write things in my sketchbook. And that, that, so the research and looking things up phase is probably like uh, a top of what I already know and have done. Probably like 10 hours, probably more, a little more, I want to say. And sometimes I will, like YouTube has a fun little uh, double speed option if you hit the little D. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, I've, I've listened to so much Reza Aslan bullshit. I, I, I can't even tell you just doing, doing that. For the Young Turks, there was there was enough stuff I didn't actually have to do that. You don't have to go very far before you find <laughs> doing something. Yeah, their their fallacies are usually just like speed bumps. Their in fallacies a are normally you're like, just going to keep running into them. Yeah, their fallacies are normally like getting into Alex Jones's face and attempting to fight and spitting. <laughs> so all all that's pretty fast. But so that's ten hours for like let's say study phase, and then. It's, uh, I write the time codes down for clips or parts of videos that I need, so that saves me time later. I bookmark them, I put the, this is more technical, but, so, uh, I'll, I'll ask the, I'll, the, the how long does it take question. I, in my mind, I think it takes three hours, but in practice, it takes probably, like, way more. It probably takes, this is a total guess, like, 80, I want to say 80 hours, between, vert, like, VFX, and then recording, V-recording, and then script revision, and then recording. Again, I'm finding more and more ways to be uh, efficient with this. There are little things like I used to export things out of you know this VFX program and then integrate them into like the video editing program, where that took a long time. I'd have to take breaks and all that, or or things were harder earlier on when I had when I had to get specific assets like like let's say like the sh I normally put a, a part in these video series where. You see, like, there's, like, a fake store in the real Progressive Insurance commercial ads. 
Right. And, you know, I had to get all those shelves lined with uh, those boxes. With all the different fallacies. Exactly. <laughs> what a pain. I, yeah, I have to nap those things, or I have to uh, get some higher res video bars that they put over those little blue bars, or, you know, this and that, or find the right fonts, uh, all this stuff, animation. And then and normally I like to throw in a little extra this and that. So hunting for some clips in the higher resolution are hard. Yeah, I'm trying to think of one. I don't know, like when I made that Mortal Kombat fatality thing for Jimmy Doris. <laughs> right. It, it, took long, it took like a whole day to like track glasses onto Reptile's face to <laughs> to make it seem like Jimmy Doris. And, uh, <laughs> it was a great effect. It's, as far as we're concerned as an audience, it was worth the day of your life. See, I'm, I'm glad. And, and see, those little things, I try I try to do a little bit more. I, I, I know there's more efficient ways to do them, but they'll, they'll suck up a lot, a lot of time. So I think 80 hours for like a five-minute video, or at least in the Regressive Series. Right on. Now I'm going to change pace here a little bit. Um, recently, there's been an uptick, and I don't know why on earth this has come up as a uh, probably because vegan gains is a complete lunatic and people like watching him like they like watching a car accident. <laughs> um, I know you and I have spoken to some degree about the vegan issue. And if I understand correctly, if I have read this correctly, uh, I have taken you to be a vegetarian, though stopping short of being a full blown vegan. Am I correct there? Or where do you stand on that? You are correct, sir. Uh, although full blown vegan sounds like a, a disease. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is it is it HIV or full blown AIDS? Oh, HIV or full blown vegan? It's full blown veganism. <laughs> uh, it's only almond milk from now on. But no, I I have been a vegetarian probably for like two and a half or three years now. I, I, I think I have perhaps a little bit more energy. Honestly, in all honesty, I think everything's essentially the same. Maybe, you know, you lose a little bit of punch because it just so happens that a lot of things that are fried are meat. So I don't know. I don't Definitely. Know yeah. Itself, but, but getting away from that. So people like Venetian, the, the guy, look at my vegetarian body. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that guy who's going super saiyan. Uh, yeah, that's that, that doesn't do good. For like the idea of a vegetarian cause, I understand Black Pigeon speaks is a vegetarian or vegan or at least. I th yeah, I think he's a vegan. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So I don't think it has to be such a wildly liberal idea to simply consider the argument that do we need meat to to function and to survive or to be happy? In my case, it's not so. I have done it for a very long time. I think I do know what I'm missing out on. But if you you just kind of put everything down on paper. And this is this is akin to me. It's kind of like a point I make against Islam when I do criticize it. It's like, look, I make, I criticize my own culture all the time. I really do criticize other people's cultures because, well, they can do bad things too. 33% of the nation is obese. Another third is overweight. And that needs to be addressed big time. I think a lot of that is also due to this Marxism. We're just kind of getting stupider and fatter and lazier and just becoming emotionally attached to the food we eat. We're not being a little bit more objective. And I'm going to do an entire series in the future outlining every little argument that there is for and against vegetarianism and, uh, or veganism. And so this is going to be a real half-assed explanation. I'm, I'm kind of used to people asking like, oh, you're a vegetarian? It's like as though it's the same way when people say, oh, you don't drink? Oh, my God, what happened? <laughs> Like, and now I have to explain myself. It's like, it's it's fine. Don't don't worry about it. But what they want to hear is like, why don't you eat meat? I'm like, okay, well, you want to hear the answer. And, you know, here's why. It's not just factory farming conditions. Uh, it's not just the ethics behind consuming intelligent animals, or perhaps it's the somewhat intelligent animals. Okay, I know. I know. Hey, everybody. I know goldfish isn't equal to uh, a human life. I know a pig isn't. Yeah, but you don't have to be intelligent to experience pain. Yes, true. Uh, although there's a lot of distinction in, in that particular subtopic. But anyways, whether we need it or not, it seems well documented that we don't need it. Whether it's come into play in evolution, I think, at least for now, that there was a reason for it, especially during the Ice Age. But we don't necessarily thrive on it. I've said before that uh, if I could simply photosynthesize my energy or just consume nothing but synthetic nano paste or something, that would be great. I, I would, I, I hate cooking. I hate looking for options for food. I, it's, it seems like a really base life form kind of thing to do. 
and <laughs> which we haven't escaped really, but it just consumes a lot of my time. I, and I don't, and even though the, all the, those awesome endorphins released from eating great food are indeed great. I just think that once it's all said and done, it's like, this isn't, this is not a high pursuit. It's, this is something that if I could avoid, I would avoid. And the best I can do is eat things without central nervous systems. That's just my way of doing things. And there's, benefits to it like i'm not part of the 66 percent of the of the population that could be better Uh oh did i just alienate some of the audience it's 66 percent hey Uh, and uh, i think that you said something like this earlier you know you want to be liked in uh, when you're trying to convince people of something definitely that's true however you know just the subject matter means that oftentimes you have to be the messenger of bad news Oh, yeah. Being liked really doesn't accomplish anything more than making an unlikable message a little bit more palatable. Exactly. So, but at the end of the day, I would rather be right than liked. (laughs) And that's probably why as I get older, I'm going to find more and more conflicts as I refine my messages or or philosophies. Sure. People I know, people that know me or, or people in my audience will eventually, it's almost a certainty, will, will disagree with me. Just very strongly, and I'll have nothing to say, but look, it would be more insulting in a way to not tell you exactly what conclusions I've arrived at. Yeah, I think there's a very good, I think there's a very good case to be made for vegetarianism slash veganism, even though they're not the same thing. I I don't think vegetarians and vegans need to be fighting uh, when they're only like 5% of the population. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, hell, I, I would rather just see like a large reduction in consumption of meat which would probably alleviate a lot of the, the wickedness going on in the factory farm industry. But they're already working on making, what is it, Memphis Labs is working on making artificial meat. But it used to be like half, a quarter million dollars for a burger. Now I think it's down to like 10000 a meatball. Don't quote me on that. But, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's a topic that I'm only scratching the surface of right now. I was going to say, we're probably better off leaving it at that. At the- for the moment, just yes. because it, it is such a, a multifaceted issue and it's easy to go on. Yes. Anecdotally, I think this will probably tickle your funny bone a little bit here. I was at my daughter's graduation the other day, and <laughs> I live in a Midwestern state, and that 33% obesity rate, I would absolutely stand behind that just because of all the humongous people I saw there. But on the other hand, I also wanted to kind of give you this because I knew you'd find this funny. Where the bell curve is concerned, I saw they had like a president's award and there was a basic tier of it where everybody had worked hard and everybody had obtained proficient ratings within their state testing and so forth. And out of 18 prizes, 17 of them were girls. Then they came to the advanced president's awards where you had to exceed those expectations and be on an advanced level for the state level testing. And all five of those awards went to boys. <laughs> so I thought you might enjoy that. But Oh, yes. Uh, you know, sometimes I don't even know if I enjoy things. I just simply <laughs> know them to be true. Uh, <laughs> that is that is it. There you go. Now, I know we've wrapped briefly about uh, Pizzagate, and it's one of those things that we kind of tread lightly on. because oh, yeah. I don't I, think... I, I'm pulling my collar as you bring it up. <laughs> yeah, neither one of us really wants to be in tinfoil hats on this one, but we can talk about things that are actually established, especially where the Jeffrey Epstein arrest and, and conviction was concerned. Do you think that there's more to that, him specifically. Uh, in other words, it's been established that he's had high-powered, high-profile people on his private plane and as guests on his island, on his little Lolita, Lolita Island or whatever, whatnot. Are you like me and kind of see fire where there's smoke? That little phrase is entirely apropos. I, that's exactly what I liken it to. I, I use another phrase to say that if, if you, there are, with something this sensational comes around, there's a lot of speculation that accompanies it. And when you get that much speculation, you just throw a lot of people, anyway, they throw the baby out with the bathwater and just label it as conspiracy theorists. As a matter of fact, saying conspiracy is almost equivalent to conspiracy theory, which itself means... It's, uh, yeah, it's almost dismissive. Yeah, you can't, right. as, as though it's impossible to conspire. People can conspire. And I have mentioned it in a previous uh, Squishcast of mine that uh, I, I looked to Hamlin's razor for this. Never ascribe to conspiracy that which can be explained by incompetence, or never ascribe to malice that which can be explained by ignorance. It's there are variations of it. 
but uh, it's essentially it says like, oh, it's a good quote. Yeah. However, however, the amount of things that are not disputed, and this is where we have to draw a line between the speculation and the things that are true, the the evidential parts, the things that are not. Like you can't extrapolate all the way to those speculations, but it is enough. There's enough smoke for you to investigate. You keep pulling a string, and if that string reveals two more, you don't just stop there for the fear of what people will say. I agree. Or more strings. Now, the people that have been on Jeffrey Epstein's island, and we'll, we'll we'll take this chance. Fuck it, whatever. I've already like thrown you know my suspicion into, and I say pedo gate maybe to like alleviate the the scoffs that accompany. Right, <laughs> pizza gate. That yeah. just sounds stupid. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's exactly how I felt. What's this pizza gate? Hi, is it another gamer gate? Some stupid gate. Let's just keep adding gate to things. Right. It's a scandal. And then I'm, I I, I do. I think a fair a fair amount of research on it, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa! It gets it gets really weird. And I've uh, I've said, you know, are we really are fighting SJWs? Because that's that's that those are those are a funny distraction. I think a lot of the times, well, feminists, BLM people, Islamists are the next level of danger. They're not going to tolerate none of this other stuff. The LGBT lobby is just to quote Archer, baby town frolics in comparison to what the the Islamist lobby will do to them once they get power. And the next level, though, is what I'm getting most hesitant toward, like attacking or addressing, is the deep state, the ones mm-hmm. who, like I've said before, I think are just using these useful idiots. Like, why is Linda Sarsour talking at the women's march? I mean, can there be anything more ironic? I I, I don't know. Um, Agreed. So when when we start talking about the deep state, and you see like all these politicians who may or may not be involved in this or that. You want to talk about Anthony Weiner's laptop. You want to talk about Dennis Haster, former Speaker of the House, who has been sentenced by a judge as a serial child molester. That happened. This guy was the Speaker of the House of Representatives. That That is a big deal, and that is a fact. Jeffrey Epstein, he got off real easy for uh, for soliciting an underage prostitute. He So imagine how much more he's gotten away with. I think everybody likes to think, like, oh, you know, that's not happening, but I'm a, I'm epistemologically critical. How do you know that? With enough power, with a private jet, with a private island in the Caribbean, what really goes on? Uh, yeah, I, I don't really know. It's speculation at that point. But if a judge already convicted him, I mean, just this Wall Street guy, how much more has he potentially gotten away with? Bill Clinton visited his island 26 times, I think 11 times without Secret Service. To be fair, people like Kevin Spacey and uh, and Chris Tucker, and even Chris Tucker and Kevin Spacey were on his plane even. But, mm-hmm. uh, but Stephen Hawking has been on his island. I, I imagine he got there uh, via plane. Either that or he had a very uh, has a very versatile wheelchair. To yeah. But well, and there's even been some implication that Trump has spent some time with Epstein. Indeed. Indeed. That's a, that's a very interesting thing that uh, needs to be investigated, too. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm sure Trump is no saint. I mean, I don't think anybody. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. You know, all hail God, Emperor Trump. It's fun to engage. In, <laughs> in that I think. Of- yeah, I think uh, you're probably. I if you're like me, the the fun of having Trump as president is just watching all the salt mining that goes on. Yeah, yeah. You know? Every every several days, I'll laugh at the fact that <laughs> that Donald Trump <laughs> is president. <laughs> like, it's almost like the ultimate act of being a troll, ex- except it's not. It's not like you're playing with the you know fatality of the nation by by hi- like electing a joke into the seat of the president. Like no, it's really. I think we did avoid a faster war. Yeah, I think we did too. Yeah, not to mention a five hundred percent increase in Muslim immigrants. But mm-hmm. uh, so keto gate. Or whatever, or like I'll just say the general notion of the upper echelons of society getting like some of the most forbidden fruit. I guess it's like the I don't know if this this whole philosophy between rich people and getting that which can only be attained by them makes them want to get it. It's it's not even <laughs> it's not even that they want it. It's but it's because others can that they want it. And if that's the case, then maybe that's why there's such a disproportionate amount of pedophilia. That's occurring in, in, in either like the political level or this, uh, you know, capitalist elitist level. Not, to, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, you know, destroying capitalism as a whole here because our president is 
like the quintessential capitalist, you know, dream. This guy is a self-made billionaire. Uh, uh, okay, people are going to contest the self-made. I don't know who I think is listening to this, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's like oh, a small loan of a million dollars. I would I would be a, you know I'd have ten billion dollars to my name if I. Okay, all right, whatever. Just saying, this guy owns three you know custom helicopters and an airplane and a bunch of towers. Blah blah blah. And, yeah. So more on the Jeffrey Epstein, Dennis Hastert. And I really do want. I really do want to just talk at length about it, but I, I don't know. I always, I always dial it back. I, I'd almost, I'd almost rather just deal with the more obvious threat, which may or may not be the most sinister threat or source. Of, yeah. Uh, of what these other two like, they're not, they're not mutually exclusive. They're all connected for sure. But it's like I might retain more credibility if I just, you know, stick to the the extremely difficult to hide, the consistent <laughs> Muslim attacks and the consistent feminist stupidity. And even when I make a video like my Lena Dunham thing, you know, I try to I, I put in nothing that wasn't true. I I mean, you wouldn't uh, do that, but I'm I'm saying John Podesta was indeed slated to be the Secretary of State of, of the United States. He, uh, I mean, the, the WikiLeaks emails with Pizzagate thing, which I didn't mention in there, which although are plenty, uh, there's plenty, uh, plenty, plenty of, of it, yeah. Not, not fire, but there's plenty of smoke uh, in those weirdly worded emails. Uh, it seems like we were talking about his references, not only that, but his brother Tony. Oh, oh it was just the artwork. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The only thing, I, because there's so much. I, I didn't mention Portugal. I didn't mention Sir Clement Freud. I didn't mention... The Pizzagate, or the, the, the Podesta leaks, uh, I, I didn't mention, like, Monica Peter. I, all I did was mention this was in an art magazine that was published. This is Tony Podesta's house. This is the artist who makes their work. Iljana Djurjevic, I think her name is. And this, uh-huh. is, this is Podesta. In his office, he has some cannibalist painting. Like, okay, that's not incriminating, but it is weird. And then when you, if you do digging on the subject, it's weirder that you have police reports matching John and Tony Podesta's faces almost identically with this uh, missing girl thing. Yeah. To the, to the point where, like, the mole above Tony Podesta's eyebrow is, is exactly mirrored in the sketch. Furthermore, and that, I think that's what makes it so hard for so many people to believe, what, these people can't hire somebody to go out and do their dirty, wet work for them? Well, you know, but at the same time, that kind of incriminates other people. Yes. And all, I mean, there's and it's not even it's not even just that there's the whole uh, the idea that they knew Sir Clement Freud, which is a is a descendant from Sigmund Freud uh-huh. is amazing. But this guy, after his death, a lot of stuff came out about his you know, dealings with children here and mm-hmm. the villa that he lived in that he's given access to, I believe, to the Podestas was three was three blocks, I think, away from the disappearance site of uh, Madeline McCann. Uh-huh. And that's just like, okay, that's a lot of coincidences. Coincidence, coincidence, coincidence. That's how I was looking at this for a long time. Look, coincidence. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. That's coincidence. And, uh, you know, you read a lot about that, like, over and over and over again. So it's not any singular damning piece of evidence. But there's a lot of smokestacks, a lot of them that are related to each other. That just there's Yeah, there's an awful lot. Yeah, there's like way too much. And not to mention, not to mention, I, I was going to put out just a, a whole thing. I, I want to make this series called uh, Squish Visor, where I actually, it's all, vi- like it's all graphics based. Like I just put everything on the screen um, and like analyze it as much as possible. But uh, as opposed to just like audio based Squish Cast. So I did a, I did a bad thing in my previous one, I, I put a lot of Pizzagate stuff, like, images in there, but I want to do that just more with, with this uh, Squish Pfizer thing. Well, like, I put, like, every piece of evidence, like, I, I want to put like, a map. It would look like, essentially, like a crazy person's bulletin board with pins being tied to each other before. Like, <laughs> and a string, yeah, you know, strings. pointing in this direction. Exactly. Like, that whole big old network of things. And it'll look crazy, but if, if every one of those uh, instances can be independently verified, it doesn't take a lot of, and I use this word carefully, imagination, because conspiracy theorists are going to be uh, accused of being overly imaginative, and conspiracy theorists themselves might accuse the general public of lacking that pattern recognition that so many detectives have to possess. 
you have to be able to read patterns. Yep. And it's in when I described Hanlon's razor earlier, the I, oh, Occam's razor comes in. It's like, okay, you're making way too many excuses for this all this really inordinate amount of circumstances. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah. And to the point where, like, okay, you have to be parsimonious here. You got to shave away every one of these things. What makes the most sense? What you are modifying your hypothesis way, way too much in order for this not to be true. So those razors are canceling themselves out, as far as I'm concerned. I don't foresee too many other people continue to peddle this, aside from, and I say this with all due respect, Bible clutching, hardcore Christians. That's the part of YouTube that I see this most in, and I'm like, dang it, it's not that I don't, you know, trust them, but it, it, it does create this kind of polar thing. I find yeah, it's a weird it spot, like being atheistic and uh, and at the same time appealing to what I, at least what my, what my analytics tell me, a conservative base, or maybe modern conservative slash classical liberal, which have a lot more in common than traditional conservatives or, or these progressive liberals. But, yeah. but I, I kind of want to appeal to just that base, like, look, this is some stuff. This is weird. If you want me to go into the body count and every strange death that has plagued so many people that have dared to investigate this? And also part of the reason why I just kind of shut up every once in a while about it. Like, I, you know, just it gets weird. If you, if you find out about Seth Rich and just like, oh, that, was he wanted gun? You find out about. <laughs> and it becomes very terrifying. Yeah, it's very terrifying. Like, especially since I'm Are you there? Did I lose you? No, no. I'm, uh, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, there oh, you are. Sorry, I, I think I pressed space bar. Uh, oh, I yeah. figured the uh, deep state had gotten to oh, us. Oh my god, wouldn't have that been <laughs> Oh no. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> no, I was saying, I mean, I, I could just rattle off Seth Rich, Monica Peterson, uh, Joe Montano, I know it sounds like a football player, but he used to, I think it was the former DNC chair, died. Right. He was, yeah. This is a phrase that'll come up a lot. Mysteriously of a heart attack. That 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 little very or or uh what is it? What's it? Uh, just suicide, five shots to the chest and another six to the back of the head on oh, Right. <laughs> That guy was determined to get the job done. Yeah, and it's always with people like FBI agent Ted Gunderson, uh, former state senator Nancy Schaefer, who was trying to expose CPS corruption. And it's like, oh, she she died at what, like age 70 with her husband in a murder-suicide? These Christian people, these good Christian people who I think have had no prior history of anything. They had their multi-generational family, like everything seems fine for them. Just apparently the story goes that the husband went crazy and uh, did a, just uh, conducted a murder-suicide. And it's like, hmm. And then, uh, I mean, how many, I mean, I have the whole list here. I'm just, I'm just not even going to go into it. Yeah, but uh, it's insane. yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's that's the whole thing. I could go on about to get. I will in the future if I don't die, and that's <laughs> that's that's what will happen. Right on. All right, so you ready for a fun one? Yeah, let's let's do a fun one. Okay, who would win in an actual fist fight, Alex Jones or Jake Huger? Oh my god! <laughs> well, that is a great question. I okay, so Alex is a spectacular water filter guy. He can filter the water like no one's business. <laughs> Certainly, he's been granted some kind of edge over the rest of humanity by doing that. However... Don't forget the supplements. Do not supplements. forget the supplements. Of that's, that's, a, that's a plus 10 attack bonus right there. But <laughs> the, the fact that he had trouble opening that jar of pickles on air concerns me. So, <laughs> he didn't open the pickles properly. So, and... I, I take Alex for more of a wrestler than a striker, and Jink has to secrete this thin film of bacon grease around his <laughs> body. So I don't think it go. I don't think it would end up too well for Alex unless he started striking. Um, Alex, I think he did lift. Up. Yeah, once upon a time, I think he he really touts that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he's friends with Joe Rogan, so I know they must have like I don't know done something to get this like sparring or something. Traded, uh, traded battle secrets. Speaking of which, speaking of which, well, re- well, let me answer your question first. Uh, I'd say Alex Jones would win against Jank, and that's not just coming from bias, <laughs> you know, bias position. Although, I, either way, I'd pay to see it a lot. I, I think I would too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I was gonna say, if somebody's looking for a, uh, you know, a fun podcast to listen to, listen to uh, the Jank Uger. I mean, oh no, God, no. Not that. <laughs> uh, the Alex Jones, Joe Rogan podcast like, one is 900 something. Uh, I think it was nine podcast 911, which is perfect for a conspiracy guy like Alex Jones. So podcast 911 with Joe Rogan and uh, Alex Jones. 
and they they talk about some Pizzagate stuff and like even Alex Jones is like really stepping away from it. Like he he almost doesn't want to do it. He later starts talking about some crazy stuff, but regardless, it's pretty fun because Joe's a good uh moderator. So because because Alex, <laughs> yeah, okay, you got to keep him on target. He yeah. starts talking about like gay frogs and lizard people. You got to <laughs> the globalists. I, I am a man. I I like to. Well, I, I I watch too many memes with him. I'm I can't actually remember the exact whole tirade he goes on to when he's like he's like I like to I like to fuck. I like to eat. I like to have children. I like to. <laughs> I, I, I'm human. My heart beats. My blood runs red. I, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's one of my favorite things to this day is still his rant with. Piers Morgan about 1776 will commence if you try to take our guns. Oh my <laughs> lord! Oh, that's great. He's he's fun, and I think he understands uh, something that we've talked about before about making you know inconvenient information fun, and it just what becomes hard. I think Gavin McGinnis does this to a degree too. I think what becomes difficult is. Uh, at least for the viewers. Now you have to separate where we're joking from where we're being serious. But if we weren't joking, you wouldn't listen to it. Just be in some obscure part of the internet or like some very poorly, if any, like has like a, an HTML web page with absolutely no CSS styling, just terrible drab, some deep net uh, <laughs> web page. But, but yeah, so watch that podcast if, uh, if anybody's interested. All right. Who's more evil? You've got. <laughs> I'm sorry, this one just occurred to me here. Who's more evil, Hillary Clinton or Dr. Evil? Oh, Hillary Clinton, easily, easily. <laughs> Dr. Evil, I just ha- think, has like mis- uh, misplaced like anger or as- aspirations. I think he's more well, Keep him up. We, we've kind of sanitized it because he's easy to laugh at, but he did want to launch a nuclear weapon into the core of the Earth and destroy the Earth <laughs> with a laser from the moon. <laughs> At least Hillary Clinton wanted to kind of slowly baptize us by fire with a bunch of Muslims. Slipshot, I will not accept Hillary <laughs> politics. <laughs> but, uh, I actually agree with you. I think she's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I don't... Uh, you technically bring up a good point. You know, nuking the center of the Earth is pretty diabolical. <laughs> But I don't know. I, I still, I, I still subscribe like the the uh, intent though. I, I don't. I think almost like Doctor Evil knows not what he does. He there's something there, something that makes him. More- <laughs> That's right. He's probably just counting on Austin Powers to eventually stop him. So yeah. it's not going to work anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hillary though, I think she, I think she's smart, which is, I mean, it's a, it's a compliment, but. Yeah, but it's also terrifying. Yeah, it's also terrifying. So I can truly see when they when she's sitting in on a meeting with a bunch of representatives from the Saudi royal family as a how much will it take for the Clinton Foundation to grant us access to the future president? I can see that pinky finger going to the mouth and going, one billion dollars. <laughs> <Dun, dun, dun, dun. laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not more James Bond, whatever. No, that was that was right on. That oh, okay, was, good, good. Because it almost sounded like dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> so yeah, that's the whole thing. Yeah, Hillary. Let's let's we're gonna play it safe on this one. Yeah, Hillary's evil. Yeah. Very good. What is on the horizon for Squishtronic? Um, well, channel and individual. Oh yes. You know, it's kind of weird to like call myself Squishtronic. It's it's almost like <laughs> this. It, it goes beyond uh, me, maybe. Um, so I say that because perhaps in the future I'd like to have a team of perhaps I don't know I've been juggling with that idea but a group of people that can assist in their own specialties what might be a more philosophically complete repository of ideas and resources for what I've touched on before I uh, I don't know if I want to give away too much about it now because uh, are you talking in the vein of like trying to generate? A media brand, almost? Not more than... Well, I mean, the media brand is indeed what I'm trying to do. Not necessarily, like, on legacy media, but, like, on the internet. It doesn't take a lot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, have, like, forums and, and videos and images and uh, and other potential apps, whatever. Stuff like that. A hub is definitely in the works. I, like I said, I had a website before. It's still being reconstructed. I'm going to have... I'm going to integrate a lot of my old kind of, like, artistic comic 2D art stuff with a lot of my more recent video and visual effects kind of stuff together. And then that'll incorporate perhaps like a blog and 
who knows all, all this all this stuff i don't want like i said i don't want to give it away too much but that's mostly in regards to the futurist aspect of why i'm doing what i'm doing i do want to see the world move in a certain direction and a lot of these I think currently Marxism is a retroviral attack on the immune system of what's going to get us there. A lot of the good ideas of America are being squashed and distracted by all these special interests and pride in the wrong things. I really want to communicate certain thoughts and I want to communicate them effectively. Uh, I think uh, uh, underscores a lot of the left's success and dominance of the media and the news is that they deliver things well. But their subject matter is highly flawed. And then the right, who is often concerned with dry numbers, have that beautiful truth down, but they just suck at delivering it. They'd rather be doing something else, I guess, or just reading, you know, a boring thing. If we can combine those two things, that's, that's what I want to do. I want to create a hub of, and the internet was, is, will make this entirely possible, as many, many other people have been demonstrating. And uh, I just have my own futurist ideas. I want to visualize, actualize. Yeah, definitely. Well, definitely keep us abreast on that one because uh, the more progress you make towards that, the more good content there's going to be. So <laughs> there's enough tripe out there, man. We need good stuff. Yeah, I only wish I could. I use the, tr- the I use the term "crank it out," but I guess by definition, it wouldn't. It would then become tripe, wouldn't it? Just uh, crank. It out. Well, not cranking it out necessarily. It's it's about having the time to do it. You yeah. know, if it, there's there's kind of a a double edged sword there, simply because uh, well, I guess it's more of a catch twenty two. You want to have the time to be able to make more content. The more time you have to make content the less content you have <laughs> right? <laughs> because you start exhausting your ideas. So I am kind of thankful for the fact that I can only do this every now and again, because you know, it would, it would make it much easier to be able to do this as my full-time job. Yeah. But at the same time, if it were my full-time job, I would be able to come up with content as easily. If it were my full-time job, I would be clenching my fists all the time at just this constant, just barrage of insanity. Oh my lord, yeah, and that's another that's another aspect of it. You would have to like really just dive right into the soup and swim in it. Yeah, definitely. I, I should take this opportunity to remind people to check out Slipshot Spartan. The split. Oh fuck. Okay. <laughs> what uh, is your name purposely a tongue twister? Because I, <laughs> it's I, just one of those things. It's okay. like I explained in one of my videos. Slipshot means half-ass Spartan means soldier. I'm the half-ass soldier. Okay, the half-ass soldier. The slipshot Spartan. <laughs> Uh, visit his channel and uh, check out some of his stuff. He's been a great interviewer I, and, and a listener here, and I've been uh, I've just been gabbing, gabbing on and on. Please, uh, you know, consider. Do you have a Patreon? I do not. I I'm pretty much doing this all pro bono at this point, simply because I just don't really have that many people. I don't have that many viewers. On top of the fact that I just got my first video banned in Norway. Wow! Congratulations. That's awesome. thank you very much. I'm, I'm really excited about it. I feel like I'm coming up here. Yeah. So, but I mean, you know, if there was enough of an interest there, I would probably be if for no other reason to be able to afford better equipment to make better quality videos Dito, i'm in the process of acquiring uh the funds necessary to you know up my my studio let's say but uh yeah it can be difficult so you know that's another that's another little uh, elbow jab to the ribs there to the listeners hey you know support me on patreon just definitely uh, just like slipshod does and yeah better. money well spent <laughs> thank you sir thank you Connor. All right, all. Well, thank you very much for sticking in with us here. <laughs> we turned into more of a rap session than anything, but there's been a lot of things I've been wanting to ask. So uh, I want to thank you once again for, for agreeing to submit to this uh, third degree, if you will. And I usually end my videos by saying, uh, or I've started at least recently by saying, continue to work towards the world that you want and plan for the world that is. That's an excellent catchphrase. It's much better and less gay than mine, which is, you stay squishy, I'll stay strong. Wait, no, that's wrong. Fuck. <laughs> you stay strong, I'll stay squishy, no, I no, guess. No, it's uh, don't be squishy, be squishtronic. That's what I say. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a reason for that, but all will be made clear uh, in time. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. And transmission.